Hey there, movie fans. It's Scott Movie Mance here with a brand spanking new episode of Rank and File. And so for this episode, we're going to do something a little different. Instead of ranking all the films in a series, we are going to rank our first filmmaker. And that filmmaker that we are going to rank is Quentin Tarantino. This is going to be a great episode of Rank and File. So if you got those red apples, light them if you got them. And let's get right to it with number 10 on the list, which is Death Proof. Released on April 6th, 2007, and was part of Grindhouse, a two-part Grindhouse film, starting with Planet Terror, ending with Death Proof. It cost about $30 million to make. Rotten Tomato score is 64%. This feels like a lesser Tarantino effort. Obviously, it's a film that is playing into his love of Grindhouse movies. It looks like he had a lot of fun making this movie. I love the all-female cast. The car chase at the end is really exciting. And Kurt Russell looks like he is having a blast as Stuntman Mike. Moving up to number nine is The Hateful Eight, released December 25th, 2015. Cost $44 million to make. Domestic gross is $54 million. Worldwide gross is $156 million. Rotten Tomatoes score is 75%. Academy Award winner for Best Musical Score for Ennio Morricone. Two additional Oscar nominations for Supporting Actress for Jennifer Jason Lee and Cinematography for Robert Richardson. Uh, this is a film that I admired more than I actually liked. It's gritty, it's violent, it's claustrophobic, it's loaded with tension. It feels like a play since most of the film takes place in one room which makes it pretty similar to Tarantino's first movie, Reservoir Dogs. But I felt like the movie was too sadistic and mean-spirited. And overall, the gleeful exuberance that I feel when I am watching Tarantino's movies, the love that he has for filmmaking, is irresistible. And I felt like that feeling was missing. None of the characters really have any redeeming qualities. Moving up to number eight on the list. Now, before I mention what that movie is, just because this next film is number eight on my list doesn't mean I didn't like it because these next eight movies are all really, really, really good for so many different reasons. But number eight on my list is Reservoir Dogs. Released on October 23rd, 1992. Cost $1.2 million to make. Domestic gross was only $2.8 million. Rotten Tomatoes score is 92%. This film had its world premiere at the Sundance Film Festival, my favorite film festival, on January 21st, 1992. This is the film that launched Tarantino's career and what a film it is. It is violent. It is gritty. It is bloody. Uh, this is a film that changed the face of independent film forever. This movie, along with 1989's Sex, Lies, and Videotape. This film, I just watched it recently to prepare for this rank and file. And not only does it hold up perfectly, but it is also still disturbing. The scene when Mr. Blonde tortures the cop, cuts off his ear, douses him with gasoline. Even by today's standards, that scene is still very, very disturbing. So many iconic scenes in this movie, especially the opening scene with the opening credits, all those guys walking in their black suits and their thin ties. Moving up to number seven on the list is Kill Bill Volume 1. Cost is $30 million to make. Domestic gross, $70 million. Worldwide gross, 181 million. Rotten Tomatoes score is 85%. This is a love letter to the samurai films, a love letter to kung fu movies, and the first of quite a few films about the power of revenge. Now, when Kill Bill came out in October of 2003, it had been six years since Tarantino's previous film, Jackie Brown, and six years is a long time to wait, especially for a filmmaker like Tarantino. So when he came out with Kill Bill Volume 1, he was firing on all cylinders and he was at the top of his game, pulling out all the stops. This is a highly stylized film with crazy over-the-top 
carnage, amazing action scenes, terrific fight scenes, and terrific choreography. Uma Thurman is just simply magnificent in this film. She gives a physically grueling and emotionally grueling performance, and she should have been nominated for Best Actress. Why she wasn't, I will never know, because she's awesome in this film. An incredible build-up in this movie, because we don't see Bill, but we definitely hear him. Again, the fight scenes are amazing. The scene when the bride, as we call her in this movie, fights off the Crazy 88 on her own. Wow, really, really amazing. So that brings us up to number six on the list, which is Kill Bill Volume 2, released April 16, 2004, cost $30 million to make. Domestic gross is $66 million. Worldwide gross, $154 million. Rotten Tomato score is 84%. So Kill Bill Volume 2 came out only six months after the first movie. Both movies were filmed at the same time. What's amazing is that Volume 2 feels so different from Volume 1. There's a different energy to it. It's more about character. It's more about the dialogue. And after all the buildup, now we finally get to see Bill and David Carradine is absolutely fantastic as Bill. He's great with the dialogue and the monologues. His monologue about Superman and about Superman's identity and about how Clark Kent is his alias is terrific. Great chemistry between David Carradine and Uma Thurman. Amazing, amazing volley between the two of them. Amazing fights in this film. Uh, the awesome fight between Elle, played by Daryl Hannah, and the bride, which we now know her as Beatrice Kiddo, in that little trailer that Michael Madsen owned, was a terrific, terrific fight scene. Also the scene where the bride is breaking out of the coffin using the techniques that she learned from her mentor, Kill Bill Volume 2. You might even say that it is the rare, superior sequel. Moving up to number five, this is, a, this is a film that I think might cause some controversy because I have it so high. I don't think it causes controversy. I think it deserves to be at number five because it is a film that has been overlooked and underrated since it opened, but it is one of Tarantino's very, very best films, and I'm putting it at number five, and that movie is... Jackie Brown, yes, released December 25th, 1997, cost $12 million to make, domestic gross is $40 million, worldwide gross is $75 million, Rotten Tomatoes score is 87%, won Academy Award nomination for supporting actor Robert Forster. So the movie is based on the book Rum Punch by Elmore Leonard. Now, how do you follow Pulp Fiction, which came out three years before? Pulp Fiction, which was a game changer, we'll get to all that in a moment, but how do you follow Pulp Fiction? Well, the answer is you just follow it. This is a great film. Like I said, it's overlooked and underrated, and uh, this is a movie that is turned down the style and is turned up the substance because this is about a great character, Jackie Brown, played by black exploitation legend Pam Greer, who gives the performance of her career and why she wasn't nominated for lead actress is beyond me because she absolutely deserved it. What a fully realized character, Pam Greer as Jackie Brown, and the romantic relationship, the chemistry, the respect that she has with Robert Forster as Max Cherry. They love each other. This is a love story, but they never crossed the line physically, but they respected each other so greatly. This is a more low-key, more straightforward film compared to its predecessor, and it only kind of like feels like a Tarantino movie, if you can call it that after just three films, when the scam goes down and you're seeing it go down in the department store with three different points of view. The first time I saw Jackie Brown, I thought it was a little slow, but over the years, as I've watched it again and again, I love it more and more, and I, it just really is a film that holds up and gets better with repeated viewings. Number four on the list, Once Upon a Time 
in Hollywood. Release date July 26, 2019. Cost us $90 million. Domestic gross, a little over $142 million. Worldwide gross is $374 million. Rotten Tomatoes score, 85%. Winner of two Academy Awards. Best Supporting Actor, Brad Pitt. And Best Production Design. Eight, count them, eight additional Oscar nominations. Best Picture, Best Director, Original Screenplay, Best Actor, Leonardo DiCaprio, Cinematography, Costume Design, Sound Mixing, and Sound Editing. Quentin Tarantino loves making movies, and he loves movies, and he loves Hollywood. This movie is a love letter to the summer of 1969, which was a crossroads of culture, of politics, of so many things, and of so many things that were happening in Hollywood. Now, history says we know what happened in the summer of 1969. It was the summer of the Charles Manson murders. And because most people know that, that is what makes watching this film such a unique and rewarding experience. Because as the movie is going along, you feel like you know what's coming. You feel this impending sense of doom and of dread because you know that Charles Manson did these murders in the summer and you know that Sharon Tate, played here by Margot Robbie, is one of them. And when Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate is at the movies watching herself, I couldn't help but think in the back of my mind, she is not going to have a good day. And then I started thinking, you know, maybe the characters of Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth, played by Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, maybe they're not going to have a good day either. Maybe they're going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And the scene when Cliff Booth, played by Brad Pitt, goes out to the Spahn Ranch, the Manson Ranch, I thought he was a goner. But of course he wasn't. And when he told uh, the Manson follower to fix his tire after he put a knife in it, Boy, did he mean it. The other thing I love about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is that more than any other film, except maybe Jackie Brown, this features the most endearing characters, the most empathetic characters in a Tarantino film. Because unlike any other film, no one's out to get anything, no one's out to hurt anybody, no one's out to kill anybody, no one's out to steal anything. This is really about these two guys in Hollywood who are facing an existential crisis. What do they do now that Hollywood is changing? And that's what makes the film timely and relevant for today. Brad Pitt is fantastic in this movie, absolutely deserving of that Academy Award win. Talk about a character he was born to play. The movie does not end the way you think it's going to. And after building all this tension because you think you know it's how it's gonna end, but then it doesn't end that way, you can feel the, the, the air being let out of the balloon. In fact, Tarantino just takes it and he just pops it completely with that ending that is both comical and slapsticky and extremely, what a relief that ending is a relief. I liked Once Upon a Time in Hollywood the first time I saw it, but I've seen it a few times and the more I see it, the more I love it because Once Upon a Time in Hollywood isn't a movie you watch. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a movie that you feel. You feel this film and it is so very effective. Moving up to number three on the list is Django Unchained. Released December 25th, 2012. Cost $100 million to make. Domestic gross, $163 million. Worldwide gross is $425 million. Making Django Unchained the highest grossing film in Tarantino's career. Rotten Tomatoes score is 87%. Two Academy Award wins for original screenplay and supporting actor for Christoph Waltz. Three additional Academy Award nominations for Best Picture, Cinematography, and Sound Editing. Another revenge fantasy. This one is also a brilliant masterpiece that's bloody. It is violent, loaded with humor, amazing dialogue. This is a love letter to the Spaghetti Westerns. Tarantino loves movies of all different genres, and each movie he makes is a love letter to that particular genre. Jamie Foxx and Christoph Waltz are great together. I really liked these characters because they had each other's backs, and they have great chemistry. And uh, Leonardo DiCaprio playing a bad guy, Monsieur Candy, and he really sinks his teeth into it. Really awesome scenes, like the old Ben monologue with the, with the skull, and then uh, the sale of Broomhilda and having to shake on it. The movie's a little long, 
but the longer length makes it fully immersive and the more you see it the more rewarding it is Django Unchained at number three moving up to number two that's a bingo with Inglorious Bastards. Released on August 21st, 2009. Cost $70 million to make. Domestic gross is $120 million. Worldwide gross, $321 million. Rotten Tomatoes score is 89%. One Oscar for supporting actor Christoph Waltz. He won both of his Oscars in Tarantino movies for supporting actor. Seven additional Oscar nominations for picture, director, original screenplay, cinematography, editing, sound mixing, and sound editing. I love this film. It is exhilarating entertainment. Christoph Waltz is magnificent in this film. He is charming and irresistible and also very scary the way he can turn deadly on a dime. Uh, the first scene of the film is so loaded with tension that that scene alone could have been the film. I would have been perfectly happy. But of course, the movie itself, the whole, all of it is really, really great. I also love the scene in the bar where they're playing the cards and uh, Michael Fassbender kind of blows it by holding up three with the wrong three fingers. Building tension, explosive climax. And this is really the first time I noticed Michael Fassbender in a movie. And the thing that struck me at the time immediately was how much Michael Fassbender resembled a young Christopher Plummer the way Christopher Plummer looked in The Sound of Music. Brad Pitt is great as Aldo Rain. I was shocked for, for in, in all the right ways at the end of this movie when they shoot Hitler in the face and the theater burns down with all the Nazis inside of it. What an exhilarating, rewarding, awesome payoff. And at the end of the film, uh, when Brad Pitt's uh, crony says to him, uh, I think this just might be your masterpiece. Yes. It absolutely is Tarantino's masterpiece, but we still have number one. And of course that has to be Pulp Fiction. Released October 14th, 1994, cost $8 million to make, domestic gross, 108 million, worldwide gross, 223 million, Rotten Tomato score is 91%. Academy Award winner, original screenplay, Tarantino and Roger Avery, six additional Oscar nominations. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Editing, Actor John Travolta, Actress Uma Thurman, Supporting Actor Samuel L. Jackson. This movie is brilliant from start to finish. It is a masterpiece. It is a game changer for indie film and is a game changer for all of film because of the daring, bold, ambitious approach to which it was made and structured with this non-linear structure. This movie is groundbreaking in so many ways, so many great scenes, amazing dialogue, spectacular soundtrack. What dialogue, like the Royale with cheese scene, Ezekiel 25, 17. How many times have people quoted that scene? The dance at Jack Rabbit Slims, the overdose scene, and every single scene in this movie is iconic and brilliant. This is a movie that revitalized John Travolta's career in the early 90s and kept him going really, really strong through the rest of that decade. And I love that, I love that Pulp Fiction is open to interpretation, specifically what was in the briefcase. We never see it. So the theory that I love, that I've been reading about, and I'm going with it, is that Marcellus Wallace's soul is in the briefcase and that is why he wants it back. Pulp Fiction, number one. Can't wait to see what Tarantino does next. Maybe, fingers crossed, he'll do that Star Trek movie he was talking about, but now I'm hearing he might not do it. Anyway, what did you think of this list of Tarantino films? I can't wait to hear how you rank him. So go to the comments section below. Give me your listing of the Tarantino movies. Let me know another filmmaker that you would like to see me rank and file. Hit me up on Twitter at MovieMance. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at MovieMance. Please like this video. Make sure you share it. And definitely please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. Until the next episode of Rank and File, here's looking at you, kid.